Good evening, mga kapatid. Welcome to the online Ilim Gallery. Today, we celebrate a liturgical feast, the exaltation of the Holy Cross. Early in the 4th century, Saint Helena, mother of the Roman Emperor Constantine, went to Jerusalem in search of the holy places of Christ's life. Saint Helena was credited with having discovered the fragments of the cross and the tomb in which Jesus was buried at Golgotha. Thus we celebrate the restoration of the true cross to Jerusalem in AD 629 by the Byzantine Emperor Heraclius. After it had fallen into the hands of the Persian Emperor Chosroes II in conquest of Jerusalem in AD 614. The cross represents Christ's victory over death. The cross is a symbol of our salvation. Ang krus ay simbolo ng tagumpay ni Jesus sa kamatayan. Ito ang simbolo ng ating kaligtasan. The cross is a sign of Christ Himself. It is also a sign of our faith in Jesus. In John chapter 3, verses 13 to 16, Jesus tells us, No one has gone up to heaven except the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in Him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him might not perish, but might have eternal life. Let us celebrate the cross of Jesus today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hi, brothers and sisters. Good evening. I'm Audrey and welcome to our online Elin gathering. So I have a question. How are you feeling today? Do you ever feel like your energy is a bit low lately or unmotivated? Or do you ever feel like there's no progression or you feel like you're stuck? You're not alone. I feel exactly the same way. But that is why we are so glad that you are here tonight and you can join us because God's Word will definitely refresh and renew your mind or, or renew our mind or even renew our strength. I, for one, am very grateful that we have our weekly gathering because community reminds me that I am not alone during this time. So let us begin the evening by expressing our love, expressing our gratitude, and releasing our faith by worshiping the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. It's your 
are my happy It's your love, it's your love You are my happy Jesus, happy Time to look my way I knew I knew Time to touch my heart I flew Brought me back to life It was you Father, we ask you to speak to each and every one of us in a very special way tonight. May tonight's teaching enlighten us on how to deal with different challenges we experience, especially during this lockdown and quarantine time. Knowing and believing that there is hope and there is a way to live today, not just in survival mode, but to truly live and burn bright. By your grace, in Jesus' name, Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now welcome our Teacher of the Word, Elin Missions Director, and full-time servant of the Lord, Dr. Moses Katan. Peace and blessings to all. Today I feel the need to address a reality that many of us are facing. I feel it in myself. And I feel it among family members, brothers and sisters in the communities, in the academe, in the workplace, practically everywhere I go on Zoom. There is a tangible frustration and palpable anger. People are upset with the pandemic, the prolonged lockdowns and community quarantines, with the handling or mishandling of the crisis. Nararamdaman talaga ang inis, galit, ngit-ngit. Magdadalawang taon na tayong ganito. Meron pa ba tayong maasahang good news? O walang katapusang bad news na lang lagi? Well, as a Bible person and teacher, I naturally went to the Word of God. These are my personal findings and reflections. And I share them as a fellow pilgrim trying to navigate these difficult times. As the Word of God encourages and strengthens me day by day, may the Holy Scriptures be life-giving to you as well. I began my search through the Bible for times of confinement and came across three situations, sieges or pagkubkub sa gera, exile, pagtapon mula sa lupang tinubuan sa iba yung dagat, and imprisonment o pagkakulong. Sieges, exiles, and imprisonment are times of great suffering. What lessons can we learn from sieges, exiles, and imprisonment in the Bible? For sieges, the lesson is easy. First, the key to victory is outlasting the enemy. A siege is a military blockade of a city, cutting off its supplies and reinforcements with a goal of its surrender and defeat. There are many sieges in the Bible, most in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, of course, there's the siege and destruction of Jerusalem. One scholar even counts Jerusalem was besieged 23 times in history. There are many offensive and defensive siege tactics, 
But in essence, it is a game of outlasting the enemy. Patagalan. Yung unang bumigay, talo. Yung hindi gumive up, panalo. For the defenders, will their supplies outlast the enemy surrounding them? For the attackers, will their patience, food supplies, salaries for the troops outlast the people inside? So, the name of the game was Patagalan. The one who outlasted the enemy won. I guess one lesson for us if we want to emerge victorious from this pandemic is to think long term. I know, almost two years na tayong ganito at nakaka-prostrate yung paulit-ulit na restrictions. But instead of thinking every two weeks or every month or whatever, maybe just zooming out and thinking, I will last longer than this pandemic, however long it lasts. Maybe that would be a better mindset. I remember a preacher saying long time ago that the Christian life entails outlasting the enemy. No matter how many times you have been knocked down, as long as you keep getting back up after every knockdown, you will eventually win the fight through endurance. James 1 2 to 4 says, My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. Then there are the periods of exile in the Bible. Exile was a tactic of a conquering power. The leaders and learned people of the land, anyone influential or materially well-off, were deported to a faraway land so that it would be easier to subjugate the conquered land and leaderless people. For our faith, the Babylonian exile, which is also known as the Babylonian captivity, worked unto good. It was the lowest point in Jewish history when they lost their temple, their land, and their nationhood. But, zooming out, it was during and after the exile when much of the Hebrew scriptures was written down. Prior to the exile, the faith was transmitted orally. And during and after the exile, they started writing down their faith. Imagine that. One byproduct of the captivity of the Jews in Babylon, their lowest point in history, is the Hebrew Scriptures. We now have the Torah, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the Prophets, the Writings like Psalms, Proverbs, Wisdom, all that as a byproduct of the Babylonian captivity. So one lesson we can learn from biblical exiles is from Romans 8.28 We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. 2. All things work together for good. Never lose this Romans 8.28 perspective. For people of faith, for those who love God and are called according to His purpose, all will work together for good. How? I don't know. But all the pain, suffering, difficulties of today, through some mysterious and amazing divine way, will work together for good. Next, we have the biblical imprisonments. There are many, and I can share four lessons from these imprisonments. Some famous Bible characters who were imprisoned are Joseph of Genesis, and there's a whole teaching in that. Samson, Micaiah, Jeremiah, Jehoiakim. In the New Testament, you have John the Baptist, Peter, Paul and Silas, and Jesus Christ himself who was unjustly detained during his trial. Rather than do a detailed study on each imprisonment, let me go straight to lessons I learned from them. Number three, remember and help those in prison. Our lockdowns and quarantines and imprisonments are nothing compared with those who are literally in prison. Tayo, we still have our homes, 
family, internet, and liberty. Those who are in real prisons have nothing. That is why Jesus teaches that they are among the least of our brethren. Matthew 25, 35-40 states, For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. In a message late last year from Bishop Joel Bailon, chairman of the CBCP Commission on Prison Pastoral Care, he states that there are about 100,000 prisoners in the Philippines. 40,000 of them are convicted. The rest, or 60% of them, are in detention for cases still on trial. Ang daming nakakulong ngayon na hindi pa convicted of any crime. Doesn't that shock you? Zooming out, there are about 11 million people held in prisons worldwide. Thinking less about our inconveniences and more about the real plight of prisoners may help us get out of our rut. Join me in finding a way to help prisoners. Call the CBCP and find out how you can help or send a donation. Keep them in your prayers or network with a prison ministry. Remember how specific Jesus was. I was in prison and you visited me. Also, I was in prison and you did not care for me. Prisoners are close to the Lord's heart, so they must be close to our hearts as well. 4. Keep on serving. The inspiring story of Joseph in Genesis, falsely accused by Potiphar's wife and then imprisoned, shows us what to do in negative situations. Genesis 39, 20-22 And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. He remained there in prison, but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him steadfast love. He gave him favor in the sight of the chief jailer. The chief jailer committed to Joseph's care all the prisoners who were in the prison, and whatever was done there, he was the one who did it. I call Joseph the master of hardships. He had family problems, sexual temptation, a victim of injustice, a victim of long imprisonment. He was forgotten by those he had helped. He had seemingly vanquished dreams. But instead of giving up, he acted positively each time a crisis came. In his imprisonment, he was a doer, serving his master and his fellow prisoners. Take note of how the story ends. Joseph said to his brothers, and he was now second in command of Egypt, Even though you meant harm to me, God meant it for the good to achieve this present end, the survival of many people. Again, his sufferings worked out for the good. Number five, keep on worshiping. Acts 16 tells us what Paul and Silas did while in prison. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison was shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. I teach this all the time. If you feel imprisoned by problems and difficulties, it's time to release your faith and praise the Lord. Sing praise, play praise music, go to Mass and worship, get your Bible and read the Psalms. Really, in these most trying and 
difficult times, we must let our praises pierce through the darkness. Number six, live in freedom. John 8.36 says, So if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The freedom given by Christ is not constrained by external structures. The freedom Jesus gives within sets you free no matter what limitations there are surrounding you. You are free in Christ, period. Do not allow anything to impede your freedom. 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. You are full of the Holy Spirit, so live in freedom. Be free of anger, impatience, restlessness. Be free to love and be free to live in grace and power. Galatians 5.13 says, For you were called for freedom, brothers. But do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Rather, serve one another through love. There you go. Use your freedom to serve one another. In summary, here are the lessons I learned about biblical sieges, exiles, and imprisonments. Number one, the key to victory is outlasting the enemy. Number two, all things work together for good. Number three, remember and help those in prison. Number four, keep on serving. Number five, keep on worshiping. And number six, live in freedom. May victory, endurance, and freedom be yours in Christ today and always. Amen. Eel Community's vision is to spread the good news to the ends of the earth. If you want to be part of this work of evangelization, please give your tithes, love offerings, and donations to Springs Foundation Incorporated, BPI Community Branch, account number 3141-066756, or BDO Community Branch, account number 115-801-5470. You may email your deposit slip to springsfoundation at gmail.com. We pray for all those who gave their love offerings. May the Lord bless you a hundredfold for your generosity. In Jesus' name, Amen. Prayer to the Lady of Eden O oh dear Mary, Lady of Eden, sweet and pure, pray that your Son Jesus will, to innocence and holiness, restore the hearts and minds of long lost souls. Pray that the seed of glad tidings sown in our hearts will stir us to great hope, faith, and love. Pray for the vision and intentions of community and of the church, that with the Lord's watchful care and generous provisions, they shall all be. Pray that a polluted world and all institutions will from a powerful outpouring of the latter rain, experience the blessings of fresh living water, a renewal of the spirit and healing of our land and of all nations. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Ely Misha's Prayer Lord, I make myself available for the Ministry of Missionary Evangelization on my knees or in the mission field, within our borders or in foreign zone, for a single soul or for the multitudes. 
empower me for a bonded soul winning. By your spirit, make me an instrument of your love and mercy, a witness bold and unashamed, and an inspiring bearer of the goodness. Send us the laborers, technology, and resources to reach the world. Help us break barriers, overcome obstacles, and penetrate new territories that all the peoples of the earth may know that you are God and there is no other. And to all those who reach the Lord, raise them up to become your true disciples. Here I am, Lord. Send me. In Jesus' name, Amen. Horatio Emperata Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death. Restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calongsud, pray for us. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we pray in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to live victoriously during these times of lockdown, quarantines, and confinement. We release our faith that as we live in love and in accordance with your will and plan, all things will work together for good. We remember now those who are in prison. Bless them, be near to them, and help us find ways to help them. Grant us the grace, like Joseph, to keep on serving those around us. Grant us the grace, like Paul and Silas, to keep on praising and worshiping you no matter what. And grant us the grace through the merits of Christ's death and resurrection and through the power of the Holy Spirit within us to live always in freedom, serving one another in love. We pray that you heal those who are sick, provide for those who are in need, and that you open heaven to respond to the prayer requests of your people. All these we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again for joining us tonight. Maraming maraming salamat po. And we hope to see you again next Tuesday. Have a good night and God bless. Wonder through the desert
the place of happiness where we all could be refreshed. Now the past doesn't really matter, for we all have found a home. With one mind and one heart, where Jesus is our Lord, filled with joy and laughter. Oh,